today's video log is or video blog. Uh, it's not going to focus on anything in particular. It's just a nice day. We are one day ahead of an encroaching snowfall. Pretty day here on Vancouver Island and British Columbia. This is on the very western coast of Canada, whatever that means. Different precincts of the international uh, militarized culture, Roman culture, fascist culture, basically. And I mean, it's a it's a much used term and. Uh, very pejorative term, um, but to me it has a very specific definition. It means a culture which indulges, buys, uh, sells, and farms a consolidated uh, monopoly upon force and faith. So uh, what people believe and what this, what their beliefs and uh, the taste fashioned by such a fascist world implore, exhort them to do, and for what reasons and what actual effects and uh, what remaining capacity to make any viable distinction between the two. To, d to discriminate adequately uh, as to the actual effects of their thoughts and beliefs. And, uh, and indeed, the, the cost of, of losing beyond all subsequent awareness or interest uh, their native coordination of mind and body. Uh, their voices and stories with those of their ancestors, and indeed the temple and dimension of the child by birth. It's a pretty little resort here. Side. side of the ocean, we've got some local islands here where people live, just on the, I don't know what you call that, uh, maybe Two and a half miles away. You can take a little a little ferry over there. They actually uh, this island's called the Ski uh, in the on the horizon there, and um, the one beyond it's called Texeda. And the Ski, they don't have any, uh, they don't contract for any um, power and electricity but that which they can generate themselves through various means. Diesel being a common fuel, um, but they also use uh, kind of micro hydroelectric on streams, solar probably. And they smoke a lot of marijuana, I'm told. And they grow a lot of marijuana over there. Do you, want, do you want me to go and get them? Uh -oh. Ready? Here. <laughs> Mine's like that too. He gets a scent and he just won't leave it. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Um, cannabinoids have some very beneficial effects, or I should say they can have some very beneficial effects. Um, 
the cautionary note, of course, to that is that with any psychoactive or psychomimetic uh, substance, is that it is uh, mildly to moderately psychosis-inducing, um, which is sort of a fire, fight fire with fire of the considerable psychoses uh, sustained um, and adapting, sustained by and adapting to a cybernetic industrial society um, that deprives children of um, an unbroken congress with the celestial psychology of their mother and father, and indeed the mothers and fathers with their children, by uh, a lot of very unquestioned conventions like uh, the education system, birth, death, funerary rights, marriage rights, and all kinds of contracts for labor, um, and particularly paying for your own labor, your own property, uh, as part of the labor cults, which are probably have a membership greater than all the other religions in the world combined. So, um, a psychomimetic has a moderately, uh, mildly to moderately, depending on the situation, which I'll, I'll qualify this with, psychosis-inducing facts. So this is sort of like an assault on the mind. Uh, not necessarily a totally detrimental one, but I mean, just like drinking a cup of coffee, it's, it's a challenge for the system. Uh, on the one hand, the body is meant to be challenged. Um, and it's going to be challenged from things it should be challenged by. It's going to be challenged things you don't want to be challenged by. It's going to be challenged in ways that become a topic of debate among any number of human beings who wish to evade or encourage various kinds of challenges, some of which they find pleasurable and some of which they don't. Um, whole food, uh, raw food is a challenge. Cooked food is a challenge. Um, you know, living is a challenge and should be uh, somewhat of a challenge um, in different ways. Now, uh, in the case of marijuana, it's... Its uses and effects have to be considered in terms of the level of health of the people using it. Um, and with any psychomimetic, perhaps with any mind-altering substance, um, you have to consider the conditions in which it's used and how much of the end consumer, how much the end consumer, is afforded any information uh, about the very influence the, uh, the very uh, influential uh, aspects of where the substance is used what what dose is ingested um, and uh, and uh, whether to to keep dosing as much as one would like and what the kinds of effects could be because with a psychomimetic a psychosis inducing substance it can feel as or more beneficial to keep dosing at higher and higher amounts uh, and losing um, um, the credible benefits, such as increasing your coordination with people, life, and yourself, uh, that you, you wish to, to actually attain, um, even if you're not cognizant of that. I think if someone's doing a mind-altering substance, they obviously are not probably in the optimum state, and, and really no one can be. In a, in a cybernetic society, and that's why we have the medicine that we do growing around us. Um, but of course, there's a, there's a great disparity in the health of people's minds, as you may well know or imagine. And the routine usage of marijuana can um, encroach upon the benefits that you might have wanted to have, and, uh, and also relieve you of the ability to even notice that fact. And so... Uh, you would have to be a kind of drug addict to encourage the unrestricted, unprohibited use of marijuana uh, without qualification, which is most of the time what is done by people who are habitual users of cannabinoids. And that is unfortunate, and that detracts from the kind of respect, I think, that one would have for a substance that one was actually benefiting from. If, uh, if you want to benefit from nature, um, you have to have a respect, some sort of thoughtfulness for what you're doing. Now, I can understand why people under various levels of chronic mental and physical pain um, would not have occasion to be so discriminating about it, um, but that doesn't really excuse them, and shouldn't, um, if something stands to hurt themselves or other people. So, 
whether or whatever our intentions are, whatever our state of mind, we, we, we have to remain accountable for the effects that they're having. And I've lived around dozens of people who grow and habitually use marijuana for stretches of, say, 10 years of my life. Um, I've heard a lot of stories from people who grew up on the island that I'm talking about uh, around parents doing a lot of marijuana, a lot of other drugs around them. And these aren't good stories. These are stories of in incredible magnification of all kinds of insinuations into the whole human locus of native ethical, sexual, uh, mental and emotional development and coordination um, under the detrimental effects of which, of course, people um, can find all kinds of just as unwholesome metrics of human existence far more palatable than might someone who had lived under less unhealthy conditions or wasn't addicted to a drug. So drugs on the whole, as helpful as you could make the argument they can be, are generally not really helpful for most people and certainly not for society. I'm not in favor of people going to jail uh, for using them. I think that um, discussion and education is, is the best way. And, and ultimately, um, get providing sufficient families for the development of the brain so people don't require these, these substances at all. And if they do, that they are duly informed about the kinds of effects they can have, uh, as pleasurable as they are. And having said that, um, a cannabinoid and a mind altering substance can afford, it inhibits part of the brain's function, um, irritates part of it, and also can, can definitely uh, enhance all kinds of other abilities to examine your life, um, to be aware of your environment, or to engage into communion with nature and with the voices of nature and, and indeed your own voice and your own living creative intelligence and there's much to be lauded about that um, and as with the distinction between one's personal subjective convictions and objective fact both of which have some say in what a, a, a sane society would call knowledge and story and all that kind of stuff which unfortunately doesn't really happen um, you'll get more out of all of your faculties in any medicine if you're mindful of the kinds of boundaries in which you live, uh, mindful of that under the conditions of our society, one can be very suggestible and susceptible to the detrimental effects of a drug and the, and the dogmas that invariably um, trot along beside them. Because you also have to note that drug use of any and all kinds is instrumental in all of the cults and all of the warfare and all, all of the uh, social breakdown in the world. And they're, they're not just the cause of social breakdown, they're also the effect of it. So an alcohol, an alcoholic, or an alcoholic family, somebody drinking alcohol, is not necessarily just causing disturbance, but the alcoholism itself is the effect of a breakdown. So you need to, to sort of examine with a certain amount of compassion and understanding, um, none of which has to necessarily excuse anyone from their responsibilities to themselves. Um, and compassion is understanding, is... Uh, uh, a breadth of understanding proportional to the problem under consideration. So, no, I don't recommend the use of marijuana to anyone, certainly not anyone between the age of zero and 26, when your personality is still very much forming and your brain is still very much forming. Um, I would never recommend doing any substances around people, um, unless these people uh, can be determined to be exceptionally emotionally and mentally coherent. Um, a psychomimetic makes you very suggestible to your environment. Uh, we are already suffering, where we needlessly suffer, from gross insinuations into our psychological space. Um, drugs invite things into your psychological space. Now, drugs like marijuana, drugs like psychomimetics, LXD, uh, psilocybin, fly agaric, amanita muscaria, mushrooms, all these kinds of things. Um, so anytime you read a book and you hear some of the, the cult dogma, the orthodox that goes along with it, the government is trying to stop you from being enlightened and these drugs will do this. And, and of course, lots of stories about all kinds of amazing experiences and visions. When, this, when these stories are promulgated, um, absent any very considerable cautions about their use and respect for the state of the mind and the, the very delicate conditions that need to be attended to in order to get the benefits um, without those benefits being aped by considerable losses, um, then these are not credible sources of information. Um, they're rather more evidence of the detrimental effects of these drugs. 
and indeed of an entire cybernetic society that's founded in the unceremonious and ceremonious um, progressive derangement of our faculties, of our cellular and social communication, and indeed, as I say, the whole human locus of ethical, sexual, mental, and emotional development and coordination. That's a little, that's a, a little thought uh, complex for you today. As I said before, atheists and other religious people, um, you know, you'll see, uh, I think Jacqueline Glenn is an atheist channel, and all she does is say, oh, look, here's a bunch of Christians, look how stupid they are. Here's a bunch of Christians, look how stupid they are. Um, but she never does more than just insult human intelligence when she vaunts theories like evolution without actually any evidence or any sign that she's actually even considered uh, evolutionary, evolutionary theory at all, other than just to repeat um, what she's been told about it. Um, so making adequate distinction between what is not necessarily true and necessarily true between what is not necessarily false and not necessarily true, um, you know, uh, not making these distinctions is a problem suffered by people of every spectrum, every part of the political and religious spectrum. Um, being an atheist is no immunity to stupidity any more than being a religion is. And, but this affords us an insight into a larger problem than that, that usually pointed to when people point to religious superstition or, or um, any kind of gross insult to human intelligence in the name of science or religion. Because science um, has been a product of the ancient Roman church. Um, it is um, a complementary institution that has broadened and expanded the scope of the mandate of militarized religion. Um, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have utility, it doesn't have useful products, any more than religion uh, fails to have uh, useful products to, to the mind, to a family. It's just that those products, like a drug, like an opiate upon which all these things are based, and the, the psychology learned about in terms of deranging and influencing the human mind in, in a predatory and very sophisticated way, um, can overwhelm any of the benefits beyond anyone's ability to subsequently notice or care. And that, that should be a considerable problem for anyone living in the world. And it's, it's not as simple as just pointing to silly things said in religions and saying, ha ha ha, aren't we better, aren't we smarter as atheists? That, that's, an, that's an insult to human intelligence. Jacqueline Glenn, as I've mentioned, gives absolutely no rational arguments for anything in any of the things that... The only argument she has is showing her cleavage. That's, that's about it. And, of course, as with many channels, pro-feminist and anti-feminist, all people really spend their time on is pointing at some group of society that is evidently silly, saying, oh, look at these human failings, and the, the, the insinuation being that if you don't identify with them, you're automatically a lot smarter and safer. Um, so they're really no better than the people that they're, you know, and they focus on building up you know, the channel of their look, their brand, essentially. Human beings are reduced to creating brands for ideas. Um, and a brand, of course, is something to be bought and sold. It's involved in the sort of the, the commercial cults of the world. And once you do that, you're advertising, you're telegraphing and broadcasting the fact that you are indulging and farming um, impediments to our ability, um, exhorted by all the voices of our children, all the screams of the world, and all, all the circumstances of our lives in nature to, to restore our brain function to something approaching a normal that um, isn't contingent upon eating every trust uh, and all our children alive. Uh, so I, I probably couldn't overemphasize uh, the issue. So it's important to people always err as symbiotic as our personal revelation of subjective sense and anything that claims to be objective, most of which isn't really objective, because most of science today is not based on anything you can actually sense, touch, taste, or smell. It doesn't make it wrong, but it doesn't make it right on the order of what you can see, taste, touch, and smell. And when as symbiotic as subjective and objective dimensions are to our knowing and stories and voices, to conflate them in a way that eradicates our ability and indeed any to distinguish, and indeed any distinction between the two, in the name of being the ultimate objective truth, um, is always a lose-lose situation for anyone. It just has the effect of helping people, to relieve people even more 
of their ability to care about this fact. And it doesn't add to our ability to tell stories. It doesn't add to anyone's ability, whatever utility a science or religion has, to make adequate provision for making the most of every force in nature that would help restore our brain function and our families. Thanks for listening.